It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with two Major League Baseball All-Stars. We got Dimitri. We got Jason here. We got one four-time Stanley Cup champion in Darren. We got a rock star in Lars. The only person who is not here is an X-Division champion in PD Williams. We miss you. We have a guest in Kurt Angle. Kurt, before we get started, I do want to say PD told me some great stories about you. He is sad he can't be here, but he said uh, one of his greatest memories of you was as he was transitioning from the Maple Leaf, mu or as he was going from Team Canada to the Maple Leaf Muscle and TNA, you mm -hmm. kind of took him aside and you called him a future main eventer. He said, he's not old yet. He'll get there at one point to make your words true. Well, he's he's a very talented individual. He's he's done really great things in pro wrestling. So if he's still going at it, man, I... I don't doubt that he's going to become world champion. Uh, I'm sure he's what in his mid thirties. So he's still pretty young for a pro late, wrestler. Late thirties, but late 30. <laughs> late 30. well, I, I went hard till I was 48 and then uh, things kind of slowed down. I hit a brick wall and that was it. No, that did trust me. I think uh, all of us have hit that brick wall a little bit because we're all around <laughs> the same age, but so the Kurt, I got, <laughs> questions not even about pro wrestling but about your olympic gold medal and i was very fortunate mm -hmm. enough to be in the city that you are from in pittsburgh and listen everybody knows it's the steelers the Pirates, the bobblehead Pirates. <laughs> but it, at that time in 96 it was kurt angle then the steelers so i, I think it was so cool for me because I, i'm a huge olympics fan uh winter summer I just love watching them. And when you won the Olympic gold medal, I mean, you talk about a rush. And then what was crazy, and I believe it was 97, maybe it was 96, at, when you, you came into Three Rivers as a, a, yeah. a reporter. And I'm going, man, this guy is an Olympic gold medalist. He's a hero. <laughs> and so I, I know we just kind of BS a little bit. And, um, yeah. you know, we just just hung out because – and the next thing I know, you're, you're going, oh, it's true. It's true. And and you, like you said earlier, you, you found uh, <laughs> your niche. And um, obviously, congratulations for one heck of a career. But Thank I you. do want to ask you one question. And I, I don't know, is it a, 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 a Abbas? The, the guy you beat. I can't think of the... the... Jadini, yeah. Okay. So I, I've been watching that match. And I, I want to say I watched it live. But what... Like when you came out, you were so locked in and it was just like, it was kind of, well, it was really emotional, obviously, you know, watching your mom and, and I watched it over again last night and dude, you were locked in. What was a bigger rush when you ran out or you're one of your bigger events? Um, I don't know, one of your headline events in, in, uh, in wrestling. In what was a bigger rush for you? TNA. Oh, it was definitely the Olympics. That was that was the highlight of my life. It always will be. It's you know, not, there aren't a lot of people in pro wrestling that won an Olympic gold medal, and um, it was it was the most important thing in my life at the time, and it it continued to be. I mean, the only thing more important to me right now is my family. But the Olympic gold medal that that, that defined me. That was that was it. That was the one. I, I did say when I got done, if I died tonight, I'd be the happiest man in the world. I, you know, I did what I set out to do. And uh, that's, that's all I wanted to do. And now my goals changed and, you know, I adapted in life, but um, that was the number one thing that I wanted in my life, period. You, you are Here, the epitome of Pittsburgh. And I'm telling you what, that's thank you, man. Thing. It was, I mean, that was a big year for me. Yeah. Tough as they get. I won the Dapper Dan Man of the Year, and it was, yeah, it was really cool. cool. I'm I sure you won, Jason, right? I did one time, yes. Yeah, I figured. That was, that was just because I snapped my ankle, and they thought it was, it looked bad, <laughs> so they gave it to me. Not because of that. one of your All Star seasons? No. It was just, it was, Did you fall down the stairs again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, Kurt, I want to piggyback off that. This is Darren, um, because it was documented that you had a broken neck um, in that in that gold medal match or whatever. Um, from your perspective, obviously, what did, did you feel? Was, was it something that um, you felt tingling down your side or how did it affect you in the match? Or Because you didn't know it was broke till after or any complications and stuff. Can you talk about that? 
Uh, yeah, when I, I you know, I, I got thrown on my head at the U.S. Open uh, uh, about a month and a half before the Olympics, and I broke my neck. I had to wrestle the rest of the tournament. I didn't know it was broken. I was in excruciating pain, but um, I made it through, and I won the U.S. Open, and then Olympic trials was the next thing, and um, I I couldn't get cleared by a doctor to wrestle because I broke uh, four vertebrae in my neck and two discs were sticking directly in my spinal cord. So I was risking paralysis. And um, I found a doctor that found a way to allow me to compete. Now you can't do it today. <laughs> you right, know, right, right. Not with the liabilities, but back then it was a little easier. Um, he decided that he was going to give me a healing agent that would, um, it wasn't a steroid because I couldn't, you know, use anything yeah, like absolutely. the Olympics, but um, he gave me a healing agent. He was sticking me, he would have a doctor travel with me to the trials in the Olympics and uh, the doctor would stick me in the neck with Novocaine, 12 different shots throughout my neck. So I couldn't feel it. So I didn't really train uh, much. Um, I, I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> So I kind of rested and I would do some of my weight training, legs and some upper body and, uh, you know, doing my sprinting and cardio, but uh, didn't really get on the mats much. And uh, I would just went out there and competed. And, uh, you know, an hour after my match, though, I was in so much pain. Uh, the Nova came wore off and, you know, I was back to, you know, my, my I was tingling down my hands. I couldn't feel my hands. It was, it was a pretty bad situation, but every round I wrestled, the doctor would stick me in the neck five, 12 shots of Novocaine five minutes before the match. And uh, wow. I did that in the match. So it worked. I mean, you know, I, you, you really can't do that stuff today, but uh, it was, it was beneficial for me. I mean, I, you know, I was, I chancing, you know, uh, messing my body up, yes, but was it worth the risk? I think it was. Well, I think that oh, goes wow. to show you that you know what you were willing to do. You know what are you willing to put in to get out? And uh, I'm glad that it paid off for you, especially at a young age and with so much more going forward. That's awesome, dude. That's movie cool. stuff. They should make it. I'm telling you, because I was there, the, the city, and have the city's. That's a pitch burger, but they should make a movie. I'm telling you, you can play yourself. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have a documentary that uh, that's ma being made right now, and uh, someone is interested in turning it into a movie. So very it's cool. Probably going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Kirk. This is Dimitri Young, the Meat Hook. Anyway, uh, we met a couple of times at Survivor Series 2005 in Detroit. I have a picture with you and me and my sons. They young at the time, mm -hmm. and um, I had a speaking role against Edge. And uh, he called me Mark Henry, ha, ha, ha. But, um, <laughs> and then I saw you again in, in TNA in Orlando in 2009. This is my last year playing with the National. I was hurt the entire year. And I remember coming in and I was talking with Jeff Jerry and I had this crink in my neck or whatever. And this totally reminds me of baseball, Jason. You can relate. But I come in and you was getting ready to get on the training table and Jeff made you get up. And he said, hey, can you get up for – for, for me and, and you want to yes sir whatever and then I was just like damn that reminds me of like the baseball seniority you know <laughs> you know the, the you know the the, mm -hmm. the seniority thing and Jeff Jerry mm -hmm. at that time been around for like 20 years at that point and and right. I was just I was just saying you're the superstar but I was like look how you okay and, Jeff and that's was how the it boss. is and, <laughs> and yeah um, he was it, the bad man running the show he was running the show yeah but my thing is, when you first got into the business, like the whole stuff with the, the storyline, like how Darren likes to talk about, but how did you get into the acting parts? Because you was hilarious on top of being a, a legitimate badass. Yeah. And how many times was the real gold medal out? <laughs> the real gold medal? Um, I only used it at the beginning uh, of my career. Uh, Vince McMahon wanted me to wear the gold medal with, he wanted me to wear 25 gold medals. He wanted me to have an <laughs> overwhelming amount. And uh, I'll tell you a quick story. He, um, so he wanted me to wear all these medals. So I, you know, before I go out to the arena, I put the medals on and I go out and do my promo and, 
you know, all that stuff. But when I came back, um, I took them off and Jerry Briscoe, I don't know if you know who Jerry is. Oh yeah. yeah. We're all nerds here. <laughs> okay. <all> nerds, yeah. <laughs> Jerry Briscoe said, Hey, you have to wear those everywhere. And I was like, what are you talking about? He said, well, that, that's your character now. So you're going to have to wear them wherever you go. And so I started wearing them every day, everywhere. <laughs> and then one week I walked into the arena with the medals on and Vince was there and he's like, what are you doing with your medals on? I said, Jerry said, I have to wear them all the time. He said, no, you don't. You don't have to wear them when you go out to the arena. <laughs> so That's I'm wearing tough. 25 gold medals. It was just, they're all from when I was a kid, the little gold medals. <laughs> I love it. But, would, uh, would you call that your welcome to the WWE moment then? Yeah. Yeah. That was a big welcome. I, That's you big. know, the crazy thing is I, uh, they, they didn't train me uh, for promos and the acting. Um, I, I, they, they kind of rushed me in. They, you know, I, I started in late 98 and um, that's when I started training. And by uh, mid 99, I was, I was on TV or actually late 99. So I, was, I only trained for a year and uh, they, they didn't really teach me any promo skills or any pre-tape skills. And I, you know, I just had to run with it. Um, you know, Vince said, hey, we're throwing you in, in the lake. You either swim or you drown. So this is your opportunity. And the first yeah. night that I had to cut a promo, Vince uh, came to me and said, listen, this is what you're going to say. Go out there and say it. And he talked for five minutes. And I'm like, holy crap, I'm not listening. I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> he keeps saying all these words and I'm like, he wants to remember, remember, remember all this. And he gets done after five minutes and I said, Vince, I, I didn't hear a word you said. You're going to have to repeat it again. So he repeated it again and I went out there and I almost did it word for word. And uh, he was like, oh, this kid is special. He's, he's got it. He's That's because of your broadcasting it. career in Pittsburgh after you won the Olympic gold medal. He's been taking credit for your career now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The broadcasting was horrible, man. I, I you know, that's another one. It, it was a startup station and they didn't really have me trained. They uh they had me come in and read from the camera two days, two days, just an hour each day. And then I started on TV. I was a weekend sports anchor. And uh the first night on air. <laughs> my the, we're getting ready for the angle on sports and you hear the guy now it's time for the angle on sports and uh when i walked into the uh the studio i ran into the producer and all the script went everywhere so when oh I, god he's like just sit down and read from the prompter so i sat down i'm getting ready to read from the prompter and the guy says welcome to the angle on sports and the prompter goes blank and <laughs> So, yeah, I didn't yeah. say anything for like 10 seconds. I'm waiting. And the producer's like, Kurt, say something, anything. Just say anything, Kurt, say something. <laughs> and I remember the first story was about the Duquesne basketball, but I didn't know the players' names or numbers. And uh, so I was like, Duquesne played basketball today. And uh, let's Dude, go it, to the it, highlights. It did not matter. You're, you <laughs> out there, the Franco Harris, uh, Willie Stargell, Clemente. I mean, you're that big out there. So you could have just sat there and, and looked pretty and everything would have been golden <laughs> yeah. it, it was it was a nightmare but uh albie oxen rider pulled me aside after that he said i've been doing this for 15 years that never happened to me <laughs> he said it happened to you on your first <laughs> night <laughs> so I, I i broke into the business uh, you know in the uh, announcing business uh pretty harshly and uh i had i had the i i got humbled at the beginning and i stayed humbled and i got half decent after a while but it just wasn't for me i i didn't really enjoy it and i it there was a it's a lot of time there's a lot of time in the studio and going out to the field yeah i was just it was just too much for me it was you know i i know jason you can relate you you don't like a nine to five job do you no yeah yeah. i i I don't either and i i I won't go there and that was more of a 
nine to 12 midnight job. So it was, no, after just, you know, it was ooh, yeah. yeah, 15 hours a day. It was pretty hard. Yeah. I, I you, did, you did the right thing. <laughs> Go ahead, Lars. <laughs> Lars, what are you? Lars. Um, Lars. Well, Lars. First of all, what are you doing, Darren? <laughs> um, I, you know, I was, I was kind of trying to, I wanted to ask you this question because, you know, obviously when you're, you know, doing the Olympics and you're wrestling and you got to think on the fly, you know, because there's, you know, you don't, it's not like a, like professional wrestling. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a contest. And I'm wondering if, if that's why, because you have to think on the fly, did you ever make a connection? Like, well, this is why I was good with my promo because I could kind of just be on the spot there because I always have to think, you know, right then and there. Well, no, it, yeah, you know, it, the, the thing is you got to prepare for your, your promos and pre-tapes and you, you have to um, study, you know, uh, the words and, you know, if you want to put them in uh, bullet points or the whole, you know, write the whole paragraph out, whatever you have to do, but it was, um, it, it was it was difficult because wrestling, Olympic wrestling, you go by reaction. You know, when you wrestle, you you react to the guy, and so everything's you know by reaction. You don't you don't think, you just do because you're so used to training and competing, and you know you you watch film and everything and study the tapes and see what your opponent does and what his strengths and weaknesses are but you have to go by reaction. You can't be thinking of a game plan while you're out there. You, you uh, just go on the fly uh, with pro wrestling. You got to remember your match. You got to remember your promo, your pre-tapes. It's uh, there's a psychology to it. You're telling a story and, and you, you have to show emotion when you're out there, you have to show that you're angry, scared, excited, happy uh, in Olympic wrestling. You show no emotion. You just, focus and you so it's you know counter, it's a counterintuitive thing yeah yeah in olympic wrestling you want to take the guy down to go for the pin as quickly as you can pro wrestling you're going to tell a story you start off the the good guy shines the bad guy you know knocks him down gets heat on him the good guy makes a comeback and then they do false finishes and then you have the finish so there's a story and you have to remember that whole thing it's you know, I, I did an Ironman match with Brock Lesnar, and that was that was a pretty tough thing. We we had to improvise forty minutes of it because we weren't going to remember every spot. Well, so was, the other twenty minutes was, you know, what what we had planned. Well, I was at the WrestleMania when you wrestled Brock in Seattle, mm -hmm. and I was four rows back, and I saw him try to do that shooting star, and we, I mean, <laughs> me and my friend thought he was dead. And, um, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. <laughs> but the, way, the, way, the, the air was sucked out of that place when that went down, and the fact that you guys were able to recover the best that you could, um, you know, was that's like something like like that's on the fly, right? I mean, you gotta. Yeah. Gotta be quick. Well, the first thing I thought when he landed on his head, I said, "Shit." I'm going to have to hold the title for another month. <laughs> <laughs> the, re the reason why I lost to him in WrestleMania, the reason I lost to him, I was supposed to have a good title run for a while. And I, I broke my neck again. And I, uh, I had to have surgery. And, you know, Vince McMahon, uh, you know, I, he wanted me to drop the title to Brock the week before on SmackDown and just get crushed, you know, just an F5, one, two, three pin. Brock just pinned me real quick. And I called Vince and I said, listen, let me wrestle wrestle." And he said, well, we got to, you know, have a doctor clear you. And I was like, that might be a problem. Oh. But I, I, I do want to, I do oh, want to wrestle. Like the coach guy, the guy that was popping you in, in the, <laughs> the, the morphine or whatever. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, so I, I, I basically, you know, had to uh, get a, you know, pass to, to wrestle. And uh, the, my doctor, he was a really cool doctor. His name's Dr. Joe. He's a Korean doctor. And he, um, he, he got me to the point where I could wrestle. And 
uh, the, you know, the next day I flew home and I had surgery right away, but it was, uh, it was pretty scary. I don't know. So, but you know, with Brock, I thought, you know, God, he's, you know, like he's not going to be able to get up. Um, and I, I covered him for a pin and I'm like, please kick out. You have to kick out, bro. Please don't, <laughs> don't get pinned. <laughs> I, I didn't want to keep the title. <laughs> are, are you Which down there is, saying uh, like, Rock, either. you all right? Are you all right, dude? Could you, I mean, are you down there saying him when you're I, pinning him? Yeah, yeah. I said, I said, uh, Rock, you, you okay? He said, I don't know. I said, you got to kick <laughs> out. He's kicked out. <laughs> That's and a, I said, that, can you can you get up? He said, I don't know. I said, well, try to get up. So I, I actually pulled him up. And I got him up. I said, can you F5 me right now? He said, yes. And he got me up, F5 me, and that was it. So I, I, I got, I squeaked through that one. And, uh, uh, but, but that was the beginning of uh, a lot of neck injuries after that. I broke my neck again. Brock Lesnar hit me over the head with a chair six months later. And I broke my neck and I was out for a while. And then I came back, broke my neck again at WrestleMania against Eddie Guerrero. And, uh, and then I broke my neck again two years later in 2006. So I had a lot of bad luck in WWE. Well, you know, that was one of the things I wanted to ask you because I know about all your injuries and like, you know, trans, you know how did your wrestling style change over the years for you? How, what did you think about? And then... Did you go into TNA thinking, because it's obviously a different company, different style, it's more of that Southern style kind of idea. Mm -hmm. You know, then you also had the six-sided ring at one point. Did you, right. do, did you like go in there with a like, okay, I have to change my style. I have to protect my neck. Like, did you go in there with a whole different mindset leaving the WWE? No, I, I, I was actually pretty dumb. I, uh, I, 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 knocked, <laughs> I knocked it up a notch and, uh, I, I started doing crazier stuff, uh, you know, dives off the stage and moonsaults off the top rope. And I uh, took a lot of chances. I beat my body up pretty badly. Uh, I didn't start slowing down till about 2014, 15 uh, is when um, I started containing myself and doing safer moves and being real safe and basic and more basic is what I did. Yeah, I kind of just... Uh how much longer can I go? No, I mean, I think uh, anybody's <laughs> yeah. in their career, how much longer can I go? I'm going to try to be as safe as possible. And, and don't forget, I, you know, I went to rehab in 2013 from painkillers and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't taking them anymore. I was done. And not having the painkillers was yeah. pretty you can only take some yeah, a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, staying away from those made it a lot tougher. And I, that, that's when things started to slow down for me, 2014, 15. Well, you've you had one hell of a career. I mean, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, Kurt, what, what was your favorite, your personal favorite, maybe storyline or a guy that you, you wrestle? I think that, you know, when you get older, you look back and say, man, maybe I did Maybe like this guy when I knew we would always have a great match because we had great chemistry. Was there, or match was or there headline? For yeah. you? Headline. Well, uh, Chris Chris Benoit was my favorite. Um, he uh, he he was a mirror image of me. Very intense, aggressive, very technical. Uh, we had some phenomenal matches, especially uh, 2003 Royal Rumble for the world title. It was. It was a really special match. It was my favorite. Another one, Shawn Michaels. I had some great chemistry with him. Eddie Guerrero, uh, he was pretty awesome. Brock was great. I had some great matches with Undertaker, Stone Cold, The Rock, Triple H. I mean, it was, uh, you know, I, I had a pretty great career, but all those guys were seasoned vets. You know, it was, you know, when I started in WWE in 2000, I only had, you know, a year's training and I'm, I'm, I'm main, main eventing literally when I started. I mean, it was Vince McMahon put me at, at the top very quickly. And I mean, within 10 months of when I started on TV, I won the world title from the rock. I still didn't know what I was doing. I was <laughs> still learning. I, I didn't 
know uh, psychology. I didn't know, you know, I, I, I had these guys lead me in the ring. They would, they were calling spots while I was in there. And uh, right. you, know, you don't really see, every once in a while you could see them talking, but they were pretty good at keeping it, you know, hush. But, um, you know, The Rock, Austin, Triple H, Undertaker, they, they were carrying me through the matches. Chris Jericho was great. Uh, we, we had a lot of, we had a lot of fun, but it was scary for me because I didn't know what I was doing. It, it took me probably three years to get into my groove. So I, I probably wasn't there till about two. See, that's where you're wrong. It all goes back to the KDKA news sports anchor where the screen went blank and then you were able to do everything. Look, <laughs> speak, <laughs> it all goes back to the Pittsburgh local news. Jason taking credit. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, if I could do that, I could achieve anything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm not hearing anything about your TNA years. When you was main event mafia, you were the – that was my favorite Kurt Angle outside of when you beat um, Samoa Joe. To get him oh, first thank defeat. you. Well, TNA, I actually had a better career there. I, I, I hate to admit it because, uh, you know, WWE was, you know, the big company, but I, I got better. I mean uh, – you know, I was only in the business six and a half years when I switched to TNA, and uh, that was the that was the prime of my career. I mean, you know, my matches with Samoa Joe, Sting, AJ Styles, uh, Bobby Roode, um, you know, all those guys. You know, it was the I, I had a really great career there, and uh, you know, as much as I love WWE. That, that, that was so much better. It, you know, the crazy thing is, uh, I always say this, but I don't know how true it is. <clears throat> I always said that. Oh, it's true. You know, <laughs> it's damn true. I, yeah, there it is. I, I wish that, um, that, that I would have done. There's a part of me that wishes I would have stayed in WWE uh, during those years because there are more people, more eyes watching that product than TNAs. And, and I feel like a lot of people missed a lot of my career. Well, you know, can I interject? Because one of the things I wanted to say is that I enjoyed, like, like, like Dimitri, I enjoyed you a lot in TNA. And because, <laughs> um, you know, when you went over to that company, it, it was a big effing deal. And it got a lot of eyes on that product. Which, um, and I think there was a lot of people that wanted that alternative mm -hmm. from WWE programming. And I think that, um, you know, I understand what you're saying about like, you know, you wish you would have stayed, but I think you actually elevated that company to a place where I don't think it would have been without you. I don't think the roster that they had at the time, I think it could have maybe gotten there, but yeah. with added to the mix. But one of the questions I wanted to ask to you, because I've been sober 27 years. And I, know for me, I know for me as a performer, like when I got sober, things became like my vision became a lot wider. And what mm -hmm. I wanted to know from you as a performer, when you sobered up, did that same thing kind of happen to you? Did you find it more comfortable to get in there and perform? Or did you find it like the first couple times you went in there, you're like, ah, oh, it was like an unsure kind of thing. No, I had more mental clarity. You're right. Uh, it was, you know, but I, I, I didn't wrestle high. Um, I, I usually waited to take the painkillers until after I was done. You know, uh, there, there are a lot of people that, you know, see, I like perk angle better. <laughs> like, you know, perk <laughs> I, was high all the time. I was wrestling high. Um, I, I didn't do that. I, I knew that that would be detrimental to my opponent, so I wasn't going to do that. But uh, yeah, I had more mental clarity because, you know, when you when you're taking 65 painkillers a day, you're not very mentally clear. <laughs> you no. know, you're, you're you're pretty much high. You know, most of the time. I, the only time I didn't take the pills, I I didn't take them from three o'clock until after the show. And, you know, before I take them before and I take them after, but it was, it was pretty brutal. I, I had a, you know, I had a rough time in rehab. It was, it was the worst, you know, week of my life going through withdrawal. And uh, I don't ever want to go through that again, man. That, that scared the hell out of me. Yeah. 
Right. Says a guy says a guy who wrestles with a broken neck all the time, right? And just, that's <laughs> a broken goes to show you. Neck. Hey, I'm five years sober, dude. I'm I'm the same as you, more or less. But uh, um, you know, one of the things uh, I wanted to ask you, Kurt, is what do you think of where wrestling is at today? With with it look, you know, as far as uh, not only as many different brands, but you see that you know the different elite alliances are sort of joining and stuff and do you do you think as a as a wrestling fan that you know that's a good thing do you like where it's at or do you watch uh, it anymore yeah do you pay attention? yeah i i do watch it here and there um i think you know wwe uh back in you know mid 2000s 2004 or 5 they um they decided they were gonna you know make they obviously made the company public and when they did that in the early 2000s, uh, they, they decided to make the show PG rated for kids. So they, they marketed toward the kids because they knew the parents would bring them, the kids would, the parents would buy the kids merch, uh, the whole family would go, you know, older brothers and sisters, young kids, parents. So it was a good marketing plan and that's, they ran with it. Uh, the, the problem was they lost some ratings because the Attitude Era was so good. And uh, it was geared toward young adults. Uh, there was a lot of uh, adult humor. <laughs> uh, we did some crazy stuff. And uh, it'll go down in history as the best era of all time. Uh, but I think from a, a money perspective, uh, WB had it right by going PG rated. I think they, 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 they sell more um, programming throughout the world. Um, you know, they got some big deals with Fox and USA Network. They have the WWE Network and they're, they're, do, they're doing really well with that. You know, AEW reminds me of, you know, WWE back in the Attitude Era. The, the only difference is there's a lot more action now. I think... Um, psychology has gotten a little more um they they don't really show a lot of psychology now there's there's you know there are a lot of moves that they do and high flying moves and you know they don't really sell the move you know when it's pretty much uh action all the time bang 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 there's you know there's not a really good story being told it, that's my personal opinion um i think that uh uh, that's what pro wrestling wants right now. I'm not sure it's what the fans want, uh, but you know, that that's where we are right now. And, you know, we have other companies like new Japan and ring of honor and TNA or impact wrestling. Um, there's a lot of options. And I think that's probably why the ratings are so diluted. Uh, you know, you can watch a, a wrestling show every night of the week, just about. So it's, would you ever want to get back in? No, I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I, uh, you know, when I, when I took the GM job at, 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 in WWE, I wanted to wrestle and Vince McMahon didn't want me to, he wanted me to be inducted in the hall of fame first, which I thought I would do that after I retired. And then the next night he wanted me to be the GM of raw. And I did that. And I said, I still want to wrestle. And, he held it off for a while. He had me wrestle a couple of times and some of the pay-per-views, but I wasn't really active. So I wasn't in the ring training anymore. And after a, like a year and a half of doing it, you know, the GM job, my body got arthritic and everything started tightening up. And I was turning into an old man, like instantly. instantly. It, was, it was crazy just because I I wasn't taking bumps anymore. I wasn't in the ring being you, you, you weren't that guy anymore? <laughs> no. I hey, heck, we both had hair back then. Now I'm right, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right there. Uh, you lost it too. Huh? Yeah, I let's go. I got that big old piece of baloney on. The, yeah, I had to do the same thing. Shame. But, yeah. but is Kurt Angle as an on-air character, like a GM, done in the wrestling business also? I mean, I think there's still – a spot for Kurt Angle in the industry, if that's what you want outside of the ring. Uh, you know what? I, I decided, uh, you know, Vince McMahon offered me a, a job and uh, he wanted me to manage Matt Riddle. 
uh, which I was excited about, but I have a, you know, I have a new uh, fitness company, physically fit nutrition. Yes. We have these chicken snacks uh, that we're uh, selling. Uh, um, and I, I, I needed to be there. I needed to make that work. And uh, I had to get away from wrestling for a while. And, you know, now, now it's starting to pick up and things are starting to get better. Oh, Maybe I've already better. ordered them online. You did? I did, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah tell people where they can get them. Yep. Yeah. Physically uh, fit. Come. Physically tell fit. us a little bit about them. Yeah. Yeah, physicallyfit.com. They're, they're, you know, they're called chicken snacks and there's uh, snack smart plant protein snacks. They're, they're uh Chex Mix substance that uh, we we derive from uh, chicken breast and uh, and the plant protein is obviously plant protein, but uh, they have different flavors. We flavored them with sriracha, honey barbecue, pizza flavor, uh, uh, honey mustard, uh, cinnamon swirl. We have a lot of great flavors. There are 11 flavors and uh, we're, we're doing much better with it now. So uh, I, I'm glad I stuck with the plan and stay with the business because I, I need to make that work. Well, my we, wife got the sriracha last night. Did we get like a, professor, <laughs> a professor Kurt Angle with like the lab coat and you're in there mixing stuff yourself? That would be awesome. <laughs> I think Kurt, but don't you wow, think the beauty, but don't you think the beauty of it is like the fact that whatever it is and the way that wrestling where it's going is that the fact that you get this solidified, you can always come back if you're healthy or you're feeling you, you haven't put wrestling you, like you're you're still, you know, willing to do something. It's just you have a different priority right now. That's what I'm hearing. Is that right? right? Yeah, yeah. You, you're absolutely Dennis, right. I think Dennis touched on something. I mean, there's a new gimmick for you, Kurt. It's Professor Kurt Angle. You can come out with like 50, 50 stethoscopes you know, like you did in the old days. You can go out there. And just start- How about a carton of milk, too? <laughs> oh yeah, you, you gotta have the milk. Great, greatest W, uh, greatest. Yeah, that's my favorite too. We love that. I, I want to go back to this with the milk. Thing. Was that real milk? That was real milk. <laughs> that's a stink afterwards. <laughs> I, I want to take this back to physically fit for a second, Kurt. How did you? How did you realize this is something you wanted to do? And how much? Of because let's be honest, you're you're on a show with two baseball players, a musician, a four time Stanley Cup winner. Uh, did you have to get talked into it? Like, no, I'm just a wrestler. That's all I'm going to be. Or is it that's something that you were like, you know what, this is great. You mean uh, the company? Yes. Yeah, I, I I decided. You know, we started this company back in 2008, and we struggled years. Um, we were selling fiber and. Uh, uh, you know, we, we had some problems with it and, you know, it, it, the company almost went under and then we came up with this chicken snacks product and things started opening up. But I, I um, you know, we almost we almost went out of business. And that's that's when I decided I, I need to be there. Uh, you know, I was always traveling, always calling back at home, seeing how it was going and you know, I was always worried about it and uh, I had to be more hands-on. So I decided that I was going to be part of the company and, you know, I- I'm glad I did. It's, you know, it's starting to work for us. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's a good nest egg for my family, our future. And, you know, I-, I wanted to have that. And, you know, I think everybody does. Well, you can only be, we were just talking about this. You can only be cool for so long and eventually you got to hang them up. And I, I did something very similar with, uh, you know, I was with the Royals a couple of years ago and then I wanted to watch my kids grow up. But uh, yeah. I got one last thing to say to you and then the rest of the day, up. whatever. I, okay, so I disagree with what you're saying um, about the emotional thing um, from wrestling to WWE, TNA. Um, because I watched that match yesterday, your gold medal match. And he must have shot on you in overtime, I don't know, eight times. Right. I don't know how it, I mean, it was unbelievable. And you yeah. st- and there was one shot or you can just see on your face and you could see the emotion. Like, I, I ain't losing. I'm not losing. And it was so cool. And I, I mean, I just got goosebumps right now. So I I I get what you're saying. The emotional you, you, there's no emotional in, in regular wrestling. 
and you got to be all over the place. And, and, but that was awesome. I mean, he, like I said, he shot on you and he could, you didn't budge. It was awesome. So <laughs> yeah. I could see the emotion in your eyes. Maybe it's just cause I was an athlete, but it was, it was something special. Oh, thank you, Jason. He, he was a beast. He, um, he won the world championships in 93 and, uh, he got, um, he got suspended for taking a substance and which is really weird for Iranian wrestlers to do that. I don't know what it was. Uh, but so he had to sit out till, uh, the Olympics and, uh, he was world champion and it was, you know, he, he was one of the favorites to win the Olympics when he came back and he actually beat the nine time Olympic and world champion in the semis. He beat him seven to one. He crushed him. I was pretty scared. <laughs> I was, I was pre pretty nervous of Abba Shadidi. He was, he was a beast and he, he's really aggressive. Thing is, uh, you know, him taking all those shots in overtime, it got him tired. Yeah. It wore him down. I mean, he was starting to take, you know, fake uh, injury timeouts. And, yep. hey, my leg hurts. My arm hurts. Oh, he was gas. Uh, well, you guys but, were both uh, gas, but. Yeah, yeah I, well, I, I, I never get, get gassed. I, I, I did. When I trained, I trained. I did exhaust training. That's when I trained till I was exhausted and the training started. Yep. I mean, I, right. I was really adamant about it. And uh, it, it worked extremely well. That's. That's how I, you know, that's how I won. I wasn't the most technical. I wasn't the strongest. I wasn't the quickest, but stop, I was the most yeah. prepared athlete when I went out there. And uh, my, my conditioning was impeccable. That's you know, you know, my favorite. For kids, hey, Tony, the, real, kids that are listening Tony, to this, real quick. that is unbelievable because that's what you have to have to get to the level that, you know, we were all fortunate to get to is you have to have that. I ain't quitting. You have to have the... The, um, the, I'm going to keep going, 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 whether you're the best or not. But in your mind, you better know you're the best. Demetri Without a doubt. You're absolutely right, Jason. Hey, hey Kurt, you being an actual amateur wrestler that went all the way, why are there not more per, um, wrestlers that go from the amateur ranks into the professional ranks? There have been a lot of them. It's, it's, been, it's been much better now. I mean, you know... Uh, wrestlers didn't have options, you know, after the Olympics, you know, they, there wasn't much left for them. They tried pro league. It went under, uh, the only thing they had was MMA and pro wrestling and a pro wrestling. They only had, you know, Danny Hodge would did it. Uh, Jack and Jerry Briscoe, uh, did it. Um, there were a few other guys uh, back in the day, but, there weren't a lot of amateur wrestlers that were involved in pro wrestling. And the reason is the amateur wrestling community frowned upon pro wrestling because when people said, Hey, are you a wrestler? And you said, yeah. They said, Oh, one of those wrestlers on TV. And it was like, no, I'm a real wrestler. So, you know, I was taught at a young age, don't watch that pro wrestling crap. And uh, you're a real wrestler. And don't even think about getting involved. My coaches would tell me that. Is so, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. yeah. No, I was, did you? Were you ever in a position in the professional ranks to have to actually shoot on somebody? I uh, no, I I never shot on him in a match. Uh, you know, we we messed around before the show, stuff like that. But uh, no, I I never had to, and I think. Uh, all the wrestlers respected me and they, they weren't, they weren't going to do anything to, uh, kick yeah, you know, me they all knew you'd kick their ass. <laughs> yeah. well, pretty well, I think, yeah. but I think that goes Kirk, to what you said about being propelled so early on, but you were, um, you know, trial by fire in the ring where they're calling your matches. But what you told me is, is they respected you because you maybe showed them before the match how easily you could do different things. So I think that's important for younger guys is that when you hold true to who you are um, is why when the younger guys these days, right, where they, you can see the ones that get the respect because they show the respect, right? Is that more so what you look for? Like who are, who are some of the guys that, that come through that maybe – I'm looking for the names that maybe don't get the appreciation maybe that you, you saw because there's like 
the hidden talent or something something that's there. Is there anybody well, out there I mean, right now that you you know yeah, didn't I mean, get the right shake, wrong spot? Like you were you put in the wrong spot if you you know your TNA career, like we all said, we're huge fans of it because that's more of you than than the character. Is there guys that you've seen that way? Yeah, there there are guys that, that didn't really get a fair shake. Um, you know, in TNA, you know, James Storm, uh, he was a great talent. Uh Bobby Roode was phenomenal too. And he went to WWE too and he hasn't, you know, lately he's been doing some stuff, but he hasn't gotten the opportunity he deserves. I mean, there, there are some, uh, you know, Finn Balor, he, uh, he was, oh. phenomenal. Finn was, when he came in, he won the world title his first night and he blew his shoulder out. And I think that, you know, Vince McMahon, this is what I'm guessing is he said, well, he's an undersized guy. These guys get hurt all the time. Uh, I'm not going to do much with them. So that's, that's, that's my opinion of what I think Vince, you know, was thinking, but um, back in the day, I'm trying to think of some guys that, um, you know, didn't get a fair shake. Uh, you know, uh, I'd say Ken Shamrock. I thought that he should have been pushed a little bit, a little bit harder. Uh, you know, there was, um, you know, uh, Steve Blackman was a great talent. Uh, uh, there are there are guys that didn't get the fair shake. I mean, the, the thing is, there's only so much room. Uh, you know, everybody's scraping to be at the top, and uh, you know, you gotta you gotta find your way up there somehow. And uh, you know, sometimes it can get ugly. And you know, uh, you know, you have some wrestlers playing politics, so. You know, I, you oh, know, I'm yeah. not going to name any wrestlers, but you know, oh, it, yeah. it, it happens. It, it's so. everywhere. Kurt, yeah. it's everywhere. Well, well, I actually did see Shamrock knock somebody out uh, in, in a bar in Manhattan Beach. It was actually kind of cool. <laughs> hey, do you guys have any other last questions for him so we can uh, let him go? I got one. Go ahead, Vince. Sorry. Well, my, mine is, I'll wrap mine up with you uh, when you're done, Lars. Okay. Well, I have one last question. And thanks, Kurt, for joining sure. us. It's like, been a big thrill you know watching you from when you very came first came in and how organically it was and to watch you grow mm -hmm. and just thank you for all the payment i own your action thank figure. you i'm a big fan my <laughs> question question would be this we had some discussion on a last show about keith lee and about you know the fact that you got this opportunity to get elevated you rose to the occasion which i think a lot of these guys have that and I'm not going to say it's uh, we, the they are. It, I can't say potential, but I feel like it's that shot. So you got to wrestle Stone Cold, The Rock. You came up, right? Because you got that. You were able to reach their caliber of, of charisma, what they were doing, and found that in in yourself. What, do you think that there's one guy in the W current WWE promotion who has that ability as a Rock or a Stone Cold? to bring a guy like a Keith Lee up to that level, like those guys did for you? Oh, that's, that's tough. I mean, uh, you know, the guy right now that I think's hot is uh, Drew Mac McIntyre. Drew, Drew has uh, shown a lot of promise. He's, he's had a great title run and, you know, last time he's in WLB, he, he didn't fare very well. And, uh, you know, he, he didn't get a real fair shake, but he, he was kind of an a-hole back then, so he'll admit that. But he grew up when he came back, and, you know, he's had a phenomenal two years now. Uh, a guy that's going to carry a lot of people is Roman Reigns. He, uh, he has the factor. He's a great worker. A lot of people don't think he's that great of a wrestler. They just think that... You know, he looks great and, you know, he's Vince's boy, his guy, but he's, he's really good. He's, he's one of the best on the roster and uh, he, his heel run right now has been phenomenal. Um, Love it. I think, I think that though he should turn him heel five years ago, this is a long time yeah. coming. So, um, you know, the, the fans, half the fans hated him because they knew that 
he was, you know, the, the chosen one. And, uh, it, you know, made a lot of fans sick to their stomach that, you know, he would never lose a match. He was always winning. And, you know, the fans were just like, this sucks, you know, stop it with Roman Reigns. Let's, you know, let's, let's get somebody else over. And, uh, but Roman's been phenomenal. I, he, he can carry a guy and make a guy star. He's, he's the, he's awesome. the one. Same with Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is also uh, phenomenal. Well, now that you're a friend of the show, and hopefully we'll have you back on every week. That's how I. <laughs> that's how I how these it. guys into it. They started out as guests, and now look at them. They're they're locked into twenty year contracts. Unfortunately, they can't go anywhere. So uh, congratulations. <laughs> but uh, I want to go back to your physically fit thing one more time. Physicallyfit.com. What is the Kurt Angle favorite flavor? What is the one flavor? out of all of them that you would say is Kurt Angle approved? Buffalo wing blue cheese. That is my Last night. favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Got it's, it. it's my favorite. It's, it's the, it's the best for you. It's the healthiest one. It has the lowest uh, fat and carbs and the highest protein. It's the, they all vary. They're all very high in protein, but um, that one's the, the one, if you, if you want to eat clean, uh, Sriracha's clean, honey barbecue's clean. Um, you know, the one that we kind of put a little sugar in was for kids is cinnamon swirl. So that, that was more like a cinnamon toast crunch kind of flavor. And uh, so we, but we, um, we our, our product is phenomenal. I'm, I'm really happy about it. What's next for physicallyfit.com? Awesome. D, you got it then? No, I just I heard uh, what I wanted. Oh, you're yeah. talking about that D. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, D, go ahead. Well, let's wrap it up, man. This is great. No, I thought he was talking about I'm 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 a head coach. That's a, that's what I thought. Yeah. That's why I, I would have seen because it's I would have said D Mac. Right? Okay, you got anything, D Mac? Oh, I thought oh. you would have said coach. Uh, all right, all right. Let's, anything. Guys, let's we'll Anyways, thanks a lot, Kurt. Oh. Kurt, you Thank spent you, way Kurt. too much time with us. This has been amazing. The Kurt Angle, where can people find you on the internet? Uh KurtAnglebrand.com for my merch store and physicallyfit.com for my chicken snack product. And uh, that that's that's it. Kurt that's great. You'll always be the best sports broadcast oh, it is. in Pittsburgh. <laughs> hey, the guy with the best ring entrance. You suck. Without a doubt. You suck. I love Without that. a doubt. And I love how you it's true. It too. It's true, guys. It's true. Oh, God, guys.